Right, so I've been playing chess for many years and uh, I just wanted to make a list of the 10 types of chess player that there are. Now, this is a fairly unfortunate type of person. I personally don't like chess players, although I live with chess. Chess is everything I do every moment of the day. I work with it. It's how I pay my bills. But there's a problem with online chess players. Alright, so I'm going to start from 10 and I'm going all the way to 1. 10 being the most acceptable type of person, 1 being the worst. Right, so number 10, definitely the player that resigns after losing a pawn, right? You're playing a game, you're playing the opening, he reversed the move order or simply uh, made a blunder, just one pawn or maybe one tempo and he just gives up the game, resigns. This is by far the best chess player because he knows what the game really is about. One mistake doesn't mean you've lost, but you want to see your plan executed with perfection. Number nine is the one that doesn't realize that time is passing. You've got a completely equal endgame, and he's just taking his time to play his moves, doesn't realize that there is neither increment nor time to actually think. It's the moment of the game where you gotta play a little bit faster, but he just doesn't care. He wants to play every move perfect, and then you manage to flag him. Totally respectable person. Number eight, I don't have any problem with this one either, um, although maybe a little bit. It's the one that plays the opening super quick, knows his opening by heart, plays some traps, some gambits or something, and then you have to think a lot in order not to lose. It's going to take you a while, but eventually you will find a way to dismantle his stupid opening. But he's got all the time of the world, and you have to play the end game with barely a few seconds on the clock. Number seven is the feminist player. It's basically that person that complains that there's not enough women playing chess in the world and that chess is mostly male-dominated, but also doesn't bother ever beginning to play chess. Doesn't even cross her mind. Number six, the one that doesn't resign and makes you play until mate. You're basically rated like 1,500, 2,000, and uh, he's, making, he's forcing you to make a checkmate with the two rooks or with a queen. Like he's running around the board with a king whilst you have a queen and a rook as if there was any chance that you wouldn't checkmate him. I mean, you could just resign and start a new game. Why do you have to do this to yourself? Why do you have to torture yourself, you idiot? Number five, of course, we're getting worse and worse, is the one that abandons the game when he's losing it. Doesn't resign, of course. It just lets the time pass. You know, it's basically like lost a queen or something, maybe lost a rook and a knight or something. He's completely lost and he's got three minutes on the clock and you have to wait those three minutes. And you gotta hope that your connection doesn't break down. He's hoping that something will go wrong with your connection and he gets to win that lost game. Obviously, I block all of these players so that I never have to play them again, but there's so many of them because that's what chess players are. It's a category of completely unhonorable people. Number four, the one that cheats. Basically, he wants to win games without deserving to win games, even though he makes no money whatsoever. There's no profit whatsoever in winning a chess game online. So why does he cheat? He cheats because he's such a loser that he just wants to see his username associated with a high rating and then trick his own brain into believing that that rating is actually his rating so that he can feel an ego boost. Unbelievably lame. Right, so you might have realized I don't really have a great opinion about chess players online in general. Chess over the board is a completely different topic. But finally, we are in the top three of the most unacceptable chess players that there are. But anyway, let's go with it. Number three, the one that asks for a rematch after beating you. Why do you do this? Why do you have to ask for a rematch? You just beat me. You just beat me. Why do you ask for a rematch? Especially if their rating is lower than yours. Obviously, what that means is that they think you're so bad they will beat you again. You have no reason to ask for a rematch to someone you just beat. You're supposed to be willing to go to the next stage, beat someone stronger, get your rating up, beat more people. Or what you're doing is you're beating a dead horse. I mean, these people are sad, lonely, they crave for human touch and social life, but they have none. Of course, they gotta compensate for the complete lack of actual and physical success with some bullying behavior online. It's, but okay, let's keep going. We're almost at the end. Number two, the one that has mate in one and waits for his clock to touch one second left. Basically, you're playing an end game. Uh, you're playing, you know, you're rushing your last moves. You're making mistakes, blunders, and so on. He makes silly mate in one threats that you can easily block, but, you, you know, you got three seconds on the clock. You made some stupid move. He's got 20 seconds. And... That's it, he has mate in one, you just realize it, but you're gonna have to wait 19 seconds because he's gonna checkmate you one second away from the end. Now, 
The reason why they do this is just it's a psychological nightmare. But I guess it can be summed up in a very simple way. And it's once again bullying. They're not there to play, to enjoy the game, to get entertained, to be competitive, to fight. It's none of that. These people are so mentally in pain that they want you to go into pain as well. So, obviously, they could checkmate you 20 seconds away from the end, but they have to wait 19 seconds. They have to make you wait 19 seconds whilst you're hoping that he doesn't see the checkmate, but we know that he does. And basically, he's just trying to give you, instead of one second of pain, which is when you get checkmated, he wants to give you as many seconds as possible. These people are shit. And finally, here we are, number one. The one that puts a smiley face when you lose a piece or when you make a compromising mistake. So basically, I don't know, uh, he just found a fork where he can fork your king and queen with a knight. And uh, before playing that move, he just puts a smiley face or a, and then maybe he puts some crying face and then he just uh, chats. Sometimes, you know, personally, I've got the chat disabled, obviously, because uh, I don't want to talk to you. But, you know, you can see chat.com, for example, will send you a notification that says, like, this username, this player will like to chat with you. Would you accept or decline? And you gotta click. Of course, I click decline because I know what they're up to. These online players get the crown of the most pathetic chess players that there are. These are the type of men that uh, pay people to send them some lovely texts. They've obviously never been loved before. They don't have friends. And I guess subconsciously, they do wish to wake up one morning and just cease to be who they are. But that's about it. Now you know who online chess players truly are. And if you're one of those players in the top three and you're watching this video right now, go fuck yourself.